Hey there, my name is Polus and I want to share a simple fact. Creating a private Minecraft server is not as difficult as it might first appear. So in today's video, I will show you how to make one with Hostinger. First things first, we need to buy a Minecraft hosting plan. Head over to hostinger.com and under VPS, you will find Minecraft server hosting. We have three plans for you to choose from, and it all depends on how many players you expect to host and how much you wish to modify the server. For example, the VPS Alex plan is an excellent start for a small group of friends. If you have a larger group than a modest village in Minecraft, our VPS Enderman plan will be a much better fit. However, you don't have to settle right away. If you're just starting out, begin by picking the smallest plan and scale up from there. Upgrading your plan takes seconds, with no additional hassle. Pick a hosting plan, choose a period, create a Hostinger account, and select your payment option. Once a transaction is complete, log into your Hostinger account, give your server a name, select a location closest to you, and secure your server with a password. Let me introduce you to GamePanel your one-stop place for all things Minecraft server management. Log into your Hostinger account, where you will see your freshly purchased VPS server, conveniently snuggled up there. This is where you will tweak your server settings, but right now, we're only interested in accessing the game panel. Under the overview section, you will see your login URL and username. Oh, and if you already forgot your password, you can change it here. You should also see that current operating system should be set to Debian 11 with GamePanel. If for some reason that's not the case, under the Change Your Operating System, simply select the game server. Click the login URL, fill in the info, and you are good to go. It is about time we start that new server of ours. Click Create Instance, where you will find three different Minecraft versions to choose from. You're looking for a Minecraft Java version, arguably the most popular and streamlined version of the free. It is perfect if you and your friends only use their computers to play the game. You can select Bedrock if you expect people to play on several different platforms. Finally, choose the Bungie Cord version if you have a large, heavily modded server with different game modes. Give it a few minutes for that loading screen to creep its way up, pun intended. And once finished, click Manage. Here is the magical part of it all. Click Start, accept Minecraft's end user license agreement, and off you go. Your Minecraft server is online. Send your friends the endpoint IP address to access the server, and roll credits, mission accomplished. Oh, uh, you can stick around for a bit longer, as there are a few more things I can teach you. Game Panel lets you quickly tweak your Minecraft server settings to your liking. Select your instance and click Configuration. Here you will find tools for users and role management or view active sessions to see who is currently playing on your server. Gameplay and difficulty settings allow you to change your server's active game mode or difficulty level for survival. Heck, turn on hardcore mode if you hate your friends, which will permanently ban players upon death. You can also change the server.properties file and tweak some hidden Minecraft settings you wouldn't find in the configuration section. Head to Manage, File Manager, and double-click the server.properties file. Now, I would not recommend messing with it too much here if you don't know what you're doing, but this is your private server, so you do you. Just don't forget to restart the server after saving your changes. By default, the system allocates one gigabyte of RAM to the server, even if you bought a hosting plan with more memory. You can quickly change this under the configuration section, as discussed previously. Go to Java and memory and set the server limit to your desired value. Unfortunately, you can't set up more memory than your plan provides, and we recommend saving at least half a gigabyte to prevent server crashes or other problems. For example, if your server has two gigabytes of RAM, you should keep your memory limit to 1,536 megabytes, because we're using the power of two here. 
If you have a large server, it can be difficult to manage it alone. If you have a friend or player you trust, you can make them an op. Players with this role can spawn three items, kick or ban other players, and restart a server entirely if it needs one. Worry not, they are not getting access to your Hostinger account, but they will be able to use console commands in-game. There are two ways to do this. One, click Manage and open console. Type forward slash, then OP space, and add the player's nickname. Or you can use the same command in-game if you are an op yourself. To revoke a player's operator status, use the forward slash DEOP command and add the player's nickname. If you want to list all available commands that operators have access to, type forward slash help. Things happen and therefore tragedies occur. Unfortunately, no Minecraft server is safe from unexpected issues. It is a good idea to back up your server files occasionally. You can easily create a backup by heading to, you guessed it, backups. Give your backup file a unique name and hit create backup. You can also set scheduled backups for the system to save your files routinely. Go to schedule and select add new trigger. Select trigger type, for example, we are going with simple time interval option here and set the desired values. Now add new task and select take a backup. There are a whole bunch of options you can schedule, so feel free to experiment as you wish. My favorite is uh, setting up a schedule to routinely strike a player with lightning. Shocking, <laughs> that's true. Modding Minecraft makes this game exceptional and a true visual spectacle. If you're tired of messing around with the game's vanilla version, it is time to install some mods. First, we will need to install Forge. It is a modding API created to implement mods to the game quickly and easily. Stop the server, as this is important. Go to server settings, then select server type, then select Forge. If you have specific requirements for your mods, you can choose Forge version next to it. Once everything is selected, hit the download update button. You are not quite done yet. We need to set up a mods folder first. Head to File Manager, right-click anywhere, and select Create Directory. Simply name the folder as MODS and hit OK. To install a mod, simply download the jar or zip file and drag and drop it into the newly created folder. There are a bunch of third-party Minecraft mod websites to choose from. Head over to curseforge.com or 9minecraft.net and browse to your heart's content. Remember to always back up your files, just in case. Installing plugins is different, but not too complicated either. Minecraft plugins add additional functionality to your server, and there is a lot of great stuff to choose from. Head over to Configuration, Server Settings, and select a custom server type, Type. You have a whole selection to choose from, but I do recommend Paper MC for the best possible performance without sacrificing server features and functionality. Just don't forget to click Download Update. Now, go to Plugins and peruse all you want. To install a plugin, simply select something you like and hit Install. If you can't find what you're looking for, you can install a plugin manually. Simply download the jar file from the plugins website and place that file in the plugins folder. You can check all your installed plugins from a console by typing plugins and hit enter. You will start completely fresh when you create a brand new Minecraft server. What a bummer, I know, but it doesn't have to be. You can import your old world to the new server just as quickly. First, we will need to pick up your old world files. If you're on Windows, press the Windows key on your keyboard and type percent sign app data and percent sign again. Open the .minecraft folder where you will find the saves folder and your files. On Mac OS, press the command space shortcut to open spotlight search, type tilde forward slash library forward slash application support forward slash Minecraft to find your files. Now, go to File Manager, remove the current world folder as we will no longer need it, compress your old files into a single archive file and upload that archive to the server. Right-click and press Extract here. 
However, remember to rename your newly updated save file as world to upload the freshly uploaded world file or tweak the server.properties file. You should always make your Minecraft server look sleek and inviting. To change your server icon, simply go to File Manager and upload a 64 by 64 pixels PNG file. Make sure to name the server-icon.png file for it to work. Likewise, to change the server's message of the day, head over to Configuration and Server Settings. You will see the MOTD option right there. Server updates are essential, as they bring new content and bug fixes to the game. Besides, your Minecraft server will inform you if it is outdated with an error message. Luckily, Game Panel allows you to update the server effortlessly. Just before we do anything further, back up your files. I can't stress this enough. Stop the server and head over to Manage. You should see the Update button right there. Give it a few minutes and start the server after the update. Sometimes you must switch to a different Java version, for example, if a specific plugin asks for it. No worries, it is a simple thing to do. Go to Manage, Configuration, and you will find that option under Java and Memory. We covered many topics in this video, but it was all worth it considering we talked about the creative playground that is Minecraft. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to Hosinger Academy, share the video, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching and good luck on your online journey.